Adobe Bridge is free with any Adobe Cloud membership. It is a powerful creative asset manager that lets you preview, organize, edit, and publish multiple creative assets quickly and easily. I'm approaching this from the standpoint that you don't really use Adobe Bridge currently, that you just used your operating system browser or finder window. And we're gonna start from the very beginning. Like I'm going to show you how you can use Bridge to save you hours of time by very quickly setting up an automatic preference to rename all your files with a batch rename, how to resize all your files to a specific pixel dimension. I'm going to show you how you can reorganize your panels or make your thumbnails as small or as large as you want. I'm gonna show you a shortcut to look at any individual image full screen at the tap of one button. I'm gonna show you how to use the loop. You know, like photographers used to use a, a loop on a light table to check the focus of a negative. They actually have a loop embedded in bridge that you can activate to check the focus of a specific area of a specific image. There are so many powerful features in Adobe Bridge, and I'm just covering some of them in this video. This is built for beginners, kind of demonstrating why you should be using Adobe Bridge if you're a working or even an enthusiast photographer, graphic designer, any kind of an image maker. And the most important part is you can do all this visually, the way artists and photographers think. So when you first open Adobe Bridge, you probably see something like this. If you don't, Go over to the very top bar, hit the disclosure triangle, and choose Reset Workspace. And if it hasn't already done this, which it probably has if this is the first time you've opened Adobe Bridge, just choose Essentials. That way we're all starting on the same page. This is the very basic Adobe Bridge interface. Now, what I'd like to say is, I can't actually remember if these desktop documents and pictures folders are automatically loaded here in the Favorites column. If they're not, just go to your computer, go to whatever your hard drive drive is named. I have a lot of external drives plugged in plus a camera card, but here is my particular hard drive. And basically you would just click this open, find your user. And then if you don't already have your desktop documents, pictures, movies, folders, whatever it is you go to often over here in this favorites tab, well then just drag them over by clicking and dragging. I'm going to show you how to do that with my externals because I go to those all the time. So I'm just going to click and drag it down. I'm going to click. And do you see how it's giving me that blue line is saying it's going to be underneath? And I actually want all of these. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and select these two at once. Show you can do that. And this way, you basically put all your favorite folders or hard drives here under the favorites column so that we can very quickly get to them. And let me go to a folder with pictures. So I'll click on pictures and navigate to a folder. Okay, so I've navigated to this particular folder of images. Now, here's what I want to show you. I'm going to go back to my operating systems navigation system, which I'm on a Mac, so I would go to my finder. Okay, so here is the same folder in my Mac Finder. So what are the immediate limitations? Well, look how small these icons are. Can I make those any bigger? If I come up to the top menu bar, I go to Show View Options. Look at this. I do have the ability to make them one size bigger. So I'll click that. That makes them one size bigger. That's still not quite big enough, especially if I'm trying to judge facial expressions, trying to decide is something focused or not, whether I should bother even opening it up, especially if it's an Adobe RAW file. And then, well, let me go to a column view, which will give me an extra preview panel over here with some metadata. But watch what happens when I click on any of my RAW files. One 1,000, two 1,000. Okay, almost two seconds every time I want to look at an image. And this is what I'm having to do. Click on every single image. And you know how it is. If you're out shooting a portrait session and you've shot 500 images or you just got back from a travel shot and you have literally thousands of images that you're trying to go through, this is just too time intensive. And again, this is all you can do with your finder. I'm gonna close that. So this is the exact same folder, but notice how it's very visual. Like right away, the, the default size of the thumbnails are bigger, but you can adjust the size whenever you like. Just come down to the very bottom and just drag the slider up. You can pick any of these panels, hover between them and your cursor will change to this line and resize your panels. And then you can click on one and it immediately loads. Notice that was a raw file and it immediately loaded. So if I want to pull this over and then make this bigger so that I can quickly tap through with my arrow key, do you see how quick that is? I can 
make it more info based if if I want to know when things were shot so I can give that more precedence. If I don't need to see it that large, I can just scroll it back over so I can see many images at once. Now watch this. If let's say I'm on an image and I want to see it full screen, all I have to do is tap the space bar and I immediately see it full screen. I can hit the right or left arrow key and check out any image that's here. Hit the space bar again to exit that full screen preview. Let's rate them. Let's say I, I want the best examples of shutter speed. So I'll select this one and I'll click five stars. I'll come over to this one, five stars. This one is five stars. This one, five stars. But then I want some other organization method like, well, actually, I want to be able to differentiate which ones are slow shutter speeds versus fast. So maybe I'll, I would select this one and I'll hold down the shift key and select all the way over here. Hold down the command and control key. That has a slow shutter speed, that has a slow shutter speed. Now I can right click on that, go down to label, but I'm just gonna click green for approved. Well, essentially I would just click show me only the green label by clicking inside this filter tab and clicking show me only the, uh, the green labeled images. And then if I said, well, wait, only show me the five star green labeled images, then click this one. Those are my only two. So you can very quickly rate and label your images and then you think, well, wait a minute, did I lose anything? No, you didn't. You can always go back just by unchecking whatever filters you applied and just go back to whatever view you like the best. Let's say you have a portrait session and you wanna check how focused it is. Notice I selected that image and I can see pretty good. I can tap full screen, but I also have this loop. If I click over here in the preview panel, I have the ability to target the focus wherever it is that I want to see it. And I can zoom up and down with a scroll wheel. So aside from being able to adjust the size of your thumbnails, again, in, in Adobe Bridge, you can see any type of file. So obviously image files like JPEGs and your Adobe RAW files or your PSDs, but you can see pretty much every kind of file. Like let's go down, see here's a PDF. So I can come in this preview window and I can actually toggle through the PDF and see what it's about, which you definitely can't do in your file browser. Same for movies like a MOV or MP4 file, just select it so that it shows up in the preview and you can actually play, play it, scroll through it right over here. And then you can actually hover over the thumbnail and just drag your mouse from left to right. If you need to quickly figure out, you know, what, what you shot. Another great thing is you can access Adobe Camera Raw from right inside Bridge. So I'm going to click on a raw file and it open up the Camera Raw dialog box so I can quickly make my adjustments. It looks like I could throw in a little clarity and dehaze, but maybe pull down those highlights a bit, maybe even the exposure a touch. And then I can click either done to go back to Bridge or I can click open which is going to open the image in Adobe Photoshop, allowing me to do anything that I want. Maybe I wanna shift the colors a bit, file, save, it'll prompt a dialog box. And for now, I'm gonna leave it titled the same, but saving it as a PSD. So I can close that. I can go back to Bridge. It's going to update. It's gonna put anything new or this a PSD at the very bottom. So here it is, it's right here. Now I can reorganize files. I can click and just drag this. And if I can't see everything at once, I can make it a little smaller, scroll down, and I can drag this up here. So it's not bound by the conventions of being in alphabetical or in numerical order, which you do have that limitation with your file browser. You can't just drag images around to group them however you want. Now, let's say you've edited all of your images, whether you edit them in Camera Raw, as noted by this little icon up here, or you have multi-layered PSD files. And remember, you can even organize your images by file type. So all you have to do is toggle on file type under the filter and just go find your Photoshop documents. I've only done one in this video, so but I could quickly navigate and find all the PSDs that are my finished files. So I could have one, I could have a hundred, I could have a thousand. And if I had a hundred or a thousand, I would just hit command or control A and it would select all of them at once. But here's what we're going to do. I'm going to output all of these images. And how many images are in this shutter speed folder? 
tells me there's 29 images, four hidden, and it's about 286 megabytes. I'm going to select all of them by hitting Command or Control A. Now notice I have a folder over here that it's selected. How many folders are inside this folder? Just that one. So I can hit Command or Control and deselect anything that I don't want. So are there some things that I don't want? Well, maybe, maybe I don't want any frozen action. So I don't want this one. I don't want this one. I don't want this one. This one's blurry. These two are boring. Uh, this one's kind of redundant. All right, so I've made my edits and picks. So let's show you how to resize the images for output. If you go up to Tools, down to Photoshop, and then over to Image Processor, watch this. It's going to open up Adobe Photoshop, and you get this Image Processor dialog box. And you can open the first image to apply specific settings. I typically don't do that because I've already made all of mine. The default location is save in same location, which I enjoy. That way I always know where it's going to be. And notice you can output to three different file extensions at the exact same time, which is amazing. So I want to basically output all of these to JPEG. I definitely want to convert the profile to sRGB because hopefully you know by now that you need a strict color management workflow. If you're uploading anything to the web, everything on the web shows as sRGB. So you always convert to sRGB if your output is for web. If you're outputting to a printer, whether you're printing yourself or sending it to a, a custom online photo printer, then don't do this. You want that bigger color space. Now resize to fit. Typically when you click resize to fit, you're telling Photoshop, make my image this big. I'm resizing this for web, so I want full HD. So that would be 1920 by 1080. But do I key in 1920 by 1080? No, I don't, because it's going to resize to fit. And I didn't choose only horizontal images. If I did, this would work, but I didn't. So I have vertical images and horizontal images. So essentially, I need to put the same dimension in both. So whether it's a tall image or a wide image, it will automatically find the longest pixel dimension and make it 1920, which is exactly what I need. I'm going to leave these two unchecked. And here's a great time to add your copyright info. Type all rights reserved. If you're on a Mac, hit Alt-G or Option-G. You can kind of Google what it is for Windows. They have a, a longer number code you've got to type in to get the copyright symbol. Type the year, type your name. What that's going to do is it's going to embed the copyright info in every single image that you're outputting for the web. You can actually do this upon in ingest or when you're downloading your images through Bridge and just click run and walk away. Now we can batch process and walk away. And how long did that take? I mean, some of these images were really big, but you saw how quick that was. And it could have been a thousand images. So you could go away to lunch because it's going to take it 30 minutes to run and come back and it's all done. And then go back to bridge. And because I had it output as a JPEG, it's going to name the folder JPEG. So now I'll click inside that JPEG folder and I'll click on an image. And notice my pixel dimensions, 1920 by 1280. So how do you rename your files? So now that you have your images ready to go, whether it's for a school project or uploading to a Flickr album or a Smug Mug account, you can't upload images with these dash G6A3062-1 file names. You need to rename them. So I'm going to hit Command A, I'm going to go up to Tools, and I'm just going to choose Batch Rename. You can get a Batch Rename dialog box. I'm going to rename them in the same folder, which is default. And I get to choose how I want to rename them. So I'm going to call mine shutter speed underscore sequence number. Start with one, give two digits. Now I can preserve the current file name in the XMP metadata, which I'm not going to do. And I'm only working with myself, so I'm not going to bother with any of this. Here it gives me my current file name and it shows me what my new file name is. So I can quickly read it. Shutter speed 001 looks fine to me. So I'll just click rename. So I'm in that JPEG folder, right? Look at this pipeline. It shows me where I am in each of my folders. Now I have full HD images ready to upload that have been resized and renamed super quickly.